So here's a random question with kind of a neat answer and a rather unusual use case. What happens if you apply a blur filter to an image followed by a sharpening filter and then repeatedly do that? Well, as you can see here, the image starts to degrade into a strange, high contrast, abstract design. While blurring and sharpening are opposites, they're not perfect inverses, and a blur filter causes permanent information loss since certain pixel patterns can produce the same blurred result. And sharpening can't recover lost information. It can only amplify whatever high frequency content remains after blurring. So as you repeatedly blur and sharpen an image, the image degrades into this neat looking pattern. Now, this assumes the patterns to the blur and sharpening filters are reasonably balanced. If one is significantly stronger than the other, it'll dominate this process and you won't get this result. But as long as they're reasonably balanced, this strange pattern will emerge. So, other than looking kinda cool, is there any point to this? Well, some of you may recognize this as looking similar to a Turing pattern, which is a concept developed by Alan Turing, the man known as the father of computer science. He introduced this idea in his 1952 paper, The Chemical Basis of Morphogenesis which is his only paper in the field of biology. In this document, Turing proposed a mechanism to explain how certain patterns arise in nature, like spots on leopards or stripes on fish. The central idea was something he called a reaction diffusion system, where chemical substances spread through space and react with one another. In Turing's model, at least two substances are involved, typically an activator and an inhibitor. The activator promotes more of itself and the inhibitor, while the inhibitor typically diffuses faster and suppresses the activator. When the two effects balance, stable, repeating patterns can emerge. So you can kind of see the analog here. The blur filter acts like diffusion, spreading values out, and the sharpen filter acts like reaction, amplifying differences and creating contrast. To give some weight to this idea, in 2015, artist and computer scientist Andrew Wirth published a paper showing how repeating the blur and sharpen operations mathematically fit the mechanism Turing discussed in this paper. And just to slightly contradict the analog I made a moment ago, he goes in depth about how the blur and sharpen operations map to Turing's ideas. And it's a little more complex than my oversimplification. But I'll link to the paper in the description if you want a more in-depth analysis. All of this is just to say this amusing way of degrading an image has a neat little use case in simulating Turing patterns. And interestingly enough, many Photoshop actions that attempt to recreate Turing patterns use this mechanism under the hood. The earliest such occurrence I could find of this was a tutorial from 2013, and in its description it described this as an old trick, which makes me think this kind of use has been around for a while and emerged from experimentation. So anyway, next time you're bored and just randomly blurring and sharpening an image to pass the time, know that you're not just creating a cool looking image, you're also doing some interesting computer science. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching.